Two motorcyclists die in St. Elizabeth crashes. Two motorcyclists died in separate crashes in St. Elizabeth on Sunday night, and a man is in police custody after fleeing one of the accident scenes. Police identified the victim as Shane Shaw, 28, a resident of Witton District and Odin Parchment. Reports are that about 6.30 p.m., a motor car collided with Shaw's motorcycle on the Holland Bamboo Main Road, resulting in him being flung from the bike. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police said the driver of the car involved in the crash fled the scene on Sunday night and subsequently turned himself in at the Lockover Police Station Monday morning. Further investigations revealed that the man does not have a driver's license. In the other incident, police said preliminary reports are that parchment was hit from a motorcycle on the Newell Main Road. He was pronounced dead at hospital. Deadly fight between workers at bakery in Portland. A man is dead and another on the run, following a stabbing incident near the bakery where they worked in Port Antonio, Portland, Monday morning. Police sources said that two men were reportedly embroiled in a heated argument shortly after 6 a.m. on the compound of the bakery. It is alleged that one of the men pulled a bakery knife and chased the other before stabbing him in neck from behind. The wounded man was rushed to the Port Antonio Hospital where he was pronounced dead upon arrival. His attacker reported a run and is now being sought by the police. It is understood that the men are known to each other and are from the same community. Fire destroyed section of dwelling on University Christian St. Angel, displacing several university students. Fire destroyed a section of dwelling on University Christian in St. Andrew yesterday morning, displacing several university students. No one was injured in the blaze which started around 9.30 a.m. Jamaica Fire Brigade Divisional Commander for Kingston and St. Andrew, Senior Superintendent Patrick Gordon, said firefighters responded to the scene and carried out cooling down operations. He said the cause of the blaze is being investigated. So at 9.28 a.m. this morning, we received a call at fire at number one, the University Crescent. Uh, initially, one unit responded, and um, on their arrival, they observed that the fire was severe, and so they asked, or additional units. So one unit from Rallington Town and another one from Yafa responded as well to the one to the first unit which responded from Apple Tree. Um, they realized that their premises is their premises used to accommodate students who attend the university of the West Indies. We have also recognized that uh, several students were on the property. They were accounted for a total of 18, and we also observed that the total number of rooms um, on the premises amounts to 18. Uh, significant damage uh, would have been done as a result of the fire because, however, the fire is under control at this point in time, and uh, we will be conducting further investigation to determine the cause and the origin of the fire. DCP returns to work to replace Fitz Bailey as head of JCF Crime and Security Portfolio. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF has announced that Deputy Commissioner of Police DCP Richard Stewart will assume responsibility for its crime and security portfolio effective Monday. He replaces recently retired Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey as head of the portfolio. The portfolio, widely regarded as one of the most challenging with the JCF, encompasses some of the nation's most critical areas of law enforcement including crime prevention, investigations, and public safety. DCP Stewart, a seasoned officer with over 30 years of service, bring a wealth of experience to the role. He is credited with transforming the administrative arm of the JCF, modernizing training programs, and playing a key role in securing ISO 9001 certification for the force. His leadership in reshaping the training of the National Police College of Jamaica has garnered international recognition, positioning the JCF as a leader in law enforcement training. A graduate of the University of the West Indies, DCP Stewart, holds degrees in both law and accounting and has earned a reputation for his innovative approach to leadership. His appointment to the crime and security portfolio comes at a time when Jamaica continues to face significant crime challenges and is expected that this extensive background in both operational command and strategic leadership will contribute to the ongoing efforts to enhance public safety. Female killed in hit and run in Spanish Town A devastating hit and run accident in Spanish Town St. Catherine 
has claimed the life of 30-year-old Shadeen Wright, marking the fourth female fatality on the Ears roadways in recent days. According to reports, the incident occurred about 6.20 p.m. near 6 St. John's Road. Wright, an unemployed resident of Dea St. Thomas and 6 St. John's Road, Spanish Town, was crossing the road when a Honda Fit motor car struck her. The driver fled the scene, leaving Wright injured. She was rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital where she succumbed to her injuries. The St. Catherine North Traffic Department has launched an investigation into the incident and is searching for the fleeing motorist. This tragic event follows the fatal collision on Saturday that claimed the lives of 73-year-old tax operator Cecil Kemp, Patsy Bagalu Gardner, and 17-year-old student Jamila Wallace. Firefighter Shani Nelson lost her life in a crash on Friday, September 6. The recent pace of fatal accidents has raised concern about road safety in the area. Customers to see significant reduction in JPS bill for September. Energy Minister Darrell Voss has revealed that based on discussions held with the president of the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, customers should see a significant reduction in their next month's electricity bill. Balls, who spoke to reporters online via telephone, stated that JPS President Hugh Grant has advised him that utility bills were going out for September, which will be significantly lower than the August bill. Hugh Grant has confirmed to me that the significant reduction should be seen as per the instruction of the OR of soft utilities regulation, and of course the advocacy of the government through me as Minister of Energy, Darrell Voss stated. So I will see what the results are, but I am expecting that people will be much happier this month than last month. It has been a tough period for everyone, especially JPS customers, who were without electrical power following the passage of Hurricane Barrel on July 3rd. He continued, so it will be somewhat of a reprieve for them as there were many complaints from customers who had received high electricity bill even though they were without power for two to four weeks in some instances. In a letter sent to the customers, JPS said, We are happy to share that your bill this month will show a 34% reduction in the fuel charge. This reduction will positively impact your electricity bill for September 2024. The fuel charge is a significant part of your bill it varies each month based on factors such as the type of fuel used to generate electricity and the overall demand for electricity during the bill period, the light and power company stated. Following the disruptions caused by hurricane burial and the subsequent stabilization of fuel variables, the fuel charge has moved from Jamaica $32 on August 2024 bills to $21.30 on September 2024 bills. It added, JPS remains committed to transparency and ensuring that our billing practices comply with all legal and regulatory requirements. We continue to prioritize delivering stable, high-quality service to all Jamaicans. Following public outrage over significant increases, some customers were reporting for their August bill, the OR had instructed JPS to reduce some customers' bill in the next billing period and to reissue those bills issued in August with zero consumption that do not show a corresponding zero money value. After discussions with the president of JPS this morning, he advised me that bills were going out starting today for the September bill cycle and confirmed to me that significant reduction should be seen as per the instruction of the OUR and of course the advocacy of the government through me as Minister of Energy. So I will see what uh, the results are, but I'm expecting that people will be much happier this month. Than last month. No firearms or the offensive weapons allowed at PNP conference, says police. The police are advising individuals who will be attending the People's National Party PNP annual conference at the National Arena on Sunday, September 15, that no firearms, drugs, knife, and spikes, machete, long umbrellas, gloss bars, or any other item that can be used to cause serious harm or injury will be allowed inside the venue. According to a release issued on Monday, licensed firearm holders are being advised that provisions have been made at the offices of the Firearm Licensing Authority FLA on Old Hope Road in St. Andrew for the safekeeping of their firearms while the conference is in session. These individuals are being further advised that no provisions will be made at the stadium, police station, or any other police station for the storage of firearms. The public is also being reminded that all patrons will be searched upon injury 
and any item that may be used as a weapon will be seized. Motorists are also being advised that all provision of the Road Traffic Act will be strictly enforced. Drivers are therefore being specifically warned not to allow passengers to hang from motor vehicle, motor buses, sit on top of motor vehicle, or have any part of their body protruding from motor vehicles. Drivers must follow the speed limit and refrain from risky and careless driving of the nation's roadways. Anyone found in violation of the laws will be prosecuted, the release stated. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.